Welcome one and all to a K5 haul video. Today we've got something old, something new, something borrowed. So it's time to rave on with myself, Mark, Amy. And something blue. Let's check it out, shall we? We're gonna have a look at some old stuff that you find when you're down at the uh, car boot sale or uh, the market or somewhere like that. Right now, these vehicles that you see in front of you, you're gonna see them everywhere. Well, I keep seeing them everywhere anyway. And uh, I ventured forth and started purchasing a few pieces. Um, as you can see down below here, we've got uh, the very familiar, everyone's seen these vehicles now, MB38. It's an, actually a Model A Ford. Um, this one's in the box still, which is amazing. Uh, I think it cost me about a pound or something like that. So I bought a couple because it was a good idea to do so. Um, and I've got one loose, which is even better, so that I don't have to open those two up. I'm probably gonna send those off to a, a collector of these vehicles. There's thousands, I wanna say thousands, hundreds more like actually, hundreds of different um, company logos on the side. And this is when Matchbox um, was looking for sponsorship uh, to keep themselves afloat. As you can see it's a 79 model, but these models were released in, made in China. So these are basically um, early 90s, late 80s models. And uh, they, uh, they actually keep quite a lot of the original Matchbox parts, like the super fast wheels, very, very cool. And uh, this was <laughs> remarkably good condition. I do believe that the box was uh, broken and that's why it's uh, loose. Um, so yeah, good little runners. And uh, when I was playing with it, I was thinking how amazing it would be down the tracks because it, it's, it's got track potential. It's really heavy too. Um, also, I picked up this piece here and this is where the story gets interesting. Uh, I'm gonna open this one up. Now, I did have one of these before as a post office van and I sent it off to Lamar. So Lamar's gonna be pretty uh, familiar with this model. It's a 1928 Ford Model T. Uh, it's an interesting scale as well, I believe it's uh, 152, there we are, 152 scale. Um, this is an interesting one, this is uh, William Lusty from Crawley, Sussex, England. So it's right down there on the coast, William Lusty, he must be a baker or something I would imagine. Or it could be soap, or <laughs> it could be anything, couldn't it? But lovely uh, black and gold uh, details, nice old style cab as well. This is a 1920s style vehicle. This is what you'd see driving around on your road, delivering stuff. Still horses around and steam vehicles and all sorts at this time. So uh, Ford, the first mass produced car, here it is. Also, um, I thought I'd pick up this piece to compare. Now this is a Lado piece, um, made around about the same time as this piece here. As you can see the base there, it says 1989 on there. So that's made in 1989. This is round about the same time as well. This is produced by Jack O'Dell in England. You can see at the bottom there, made in England. And this was made at the old Lesney Works in Hackney. Now, this is a Royal Mail vehicle. We can just compare the two vehicles side by side because they would have been contemporaries of each we other. We have here a 1921 Ford, just coming out of the uh, First World War period and the bristling into the early 20s. And here we have a slightly, actually looks like an earlier model from say 1919. And you can probably see that by the shape of the radiator. But uh, as you can see, very distinctly their own castings. So Matchbox moved on there to the China factory and producing their own, their own pieces. We all know that uh, Lado is Odell backwards of course. Now, amazingly, I found this piece. This is another FC, and I was really pleased to pick it up. This is a 1919 Ford Model T. And for those people out there, yet again, I will demonstrate. Here's the Lado. Here's the FC. You see there, we have a lot of size difference there. So this is a 164 vehicle, and these are around about 152, 150, probably 150 on this one. It's quite a little bit bigger than uh, the 152, but not much bigger. And just because you can, here's the matchbox. And this is clicking in at, 
who knows what scale. It's quite a big scale, it's probably about 152 as well. There's the little FC next to that again, lovely thing. Of course this one's contemporary with this vehicle here. It's, it's almost like the crossover piece, isn't it? You've got the old style, 1916, 17 style front end there. Then the 1919 styling, followed by 1921 styling. I would say that that is closer to the FC. Staying with the old Matchbox, picked up a couple of buses. Yeah, I found this one, it's in disastrous condition. I kind of had to pick it up. It was four for a pound, and this was in there, number 74. I've probably got a number, number 74 somewhere, hopefully. Uh, I do believe I'm look, looking for one in green, unless I've already got one. I'm gonna, like I say, I'm gonna be looking through my buses at some point. These are really, really hard to find in good condition unless you go on the internet, on the eBay. I've seen a few on eBay, but they're not coming in cheap. So 25p, thank you very much. And how about this then? It's a little old T1. Managed to strike up a deal on this one. Unfortunately, it's got squatters in there. You can just see that. And But it does have its doors, even though it doesn't have its windows. There's always something, isn't there? But a very nice piece nonetheless. A number 34. It's from around about 1966 or thereabouts. Lovely one. This is the, uh, obviously this is the second casting version of this model. I'm really tempted to open those doors. I don't think I'm going to open them late. Oh, now they do, they do work. There we go. Quite rare with the doors. Well, now is a really good time for me to pass you over to a new outside correspondent that uh, I've managed to uh, muster up and uh, join up with the Count5 channel. And uh, some of you might be familiar with his work on Instagram um, and Twitter and places like that. Yeah, he's a bit of a media mogul. I'm going to pass you over to Mark Amy's in the outside studio. It's time to rave on with Mark Amy. And here are three models that some of you may be very familiar with but have you noticed that each one of these is missing something that's right there's no steering wheel let's have a look at this one this is the beach buggy that was the mod rod and this is the beach buggy or the Baja buggy We're looking inside and again, no steering wheel. Last of the three that I'm aware of, and there may be more, I'm sure there is, is the Volkswagen. And look, there's no steering wheel. Now Chris has got a theory on this, Mr. Count 5, that perhaps they were thinking about the future back at Lesney's in the early 70s, and perhaps cars of the future didn't need steering wheels, which could be perfectly logical. Anyway. I thought you might want to look at that. Not everybody seems to know about that. I can't think why. And one thing that does confuse me greatly is that the chief engineer at Lesney's, a Mr. Jack O'Dell, I don't quite know how he allowed that to go through. Maybe he was on holiday when they put those through. But they're all from around 71, 72 that time. Anyway, that was me raving on again and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, plus their, uh, their, st their storage techniques and everything else absolutely blithering. So... Uh... I go to Poundland, and there's also another place that's selling uh, Matchbox is Home Bargains. But first, we'll look at the stuff I got from Poundland. Yeah, we've got quite a lot of stuff here. Um, eight models in total. You can tell a Poundland model because it's on a long card. Of course, Asda has got a special little bit of there, and it's on a short card. But the presentation on these Matchboxes uh, on a long card is awesome. Anyway, so I picked up this little Baja Bandit. Oh, I love it. Um, kind of goes with the beach buggy theme it's good to see this one coming up I believe it's also out in yellow as well but I was happy to find this little orange example fantastic piece the old Range Rover Evoque 
in the alternate color, originally in orange, this one in black and looking rather stunning actually. As you can see, fully tampoed up. I do love my matchbox. I just wish that uh, Asda was a little bit more uh, generous with their pricing. Um, fantastic. I do like this piece. I preferred it when it had the um, tampos up front, mind you, but they've uh, decided to stick them on the side. And that really does look quite good, actually. It's uh, reminiscent of a bit of a cowboy farming sheriff, you can imagine flitting around. I think Clint Eastwood probably drove around in one of these once. I'm not sure. It kind of reminds me of his car. We remember that film where he was a, uh, a bit of a crazy cop out in the desert and then they pulled him up into the city. Fantastic. This is nice. The old Dodge Charger Pursuit in another alternate colour. Bit patriotic at the back there. Nice with the ram bars on the front. Beautiful thing. Do like my police cars, I must admit. There we go. So, you know, you can get some good stuff from Poundland. So definitely pop down there. They have got new cases in right now. And I still cannot find, for the life of me, the Skyline in any of its alternate variations, which is a shame, because I wouldn't mind getting a Hakasuka. And also the um, Golf, which is a shame. But nonetheless, Poundland doing a brilliant job. They actually hang them up on pegs, which is a double bonus. Oh look, we've seen this one before in the last video. <laughs> this is the one I'm gonna to send to you, Frisian, just for the hell of it. Fantastic. You can't have enough of these, so it doesn't matter if you get one or not. This is the old Road Raider with a dog in the back, I think. You might be able to see that if you're lucky. So but there you go. A couple of sleeping dogs in the back there. What military policeman would be complete without is guard dogs. This is something that you can only get in America, funnily enough. Uh, it's on an international card. So probably not just in America, but of course you can't get the long cards in the UK unless you go to Poundland. So probably, yeah, America and the rest of the world will have seen this one, but no one in England normally has ever seen a Zamboni. First time I've seen one in the shops. So we're gonna get it out and have a little explore. First thing that hits me is the amount of plastic on it. So we've got a plastic base, a plastic unit here on the front, which is obviously the, the hoovery section, I should imagine. The engine goes in there and they've got the ice scraper on the back. There's a bit of metal here. Oh, look, <laughs> tiny bit of metal on the back. Let's see how it scoots around down here. That's yeah, all right, actually. Nice and smooth. You can imagine that smoothing out the ice, ready for the uh, ice hockey tournaments and all the ice skating that goes on. Because you do get Zambonis in England, believe it or not. There we go. Oh, this is interesting. It's like this comes off. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. So it tips up. Now, who would have, who would have known that? You wouldn't have known that unless you'd taken it out of the box. That's for sure. So you can actually stash things inside your Zamboni. Interesting. <laughs> wonder what you can squeeze in there. I wonder. There you go. Maybe a stick of gum or something. Brilliant. What exactly? The, yeah. What's in your pocket? Fantastic. I know it doesn't look much. The Plowmaster, six thousand. But anyone who's familiar with my channel will know that I collect the forestry service vehicles. So this is my first time of opening up one of these as well, I believe. Um, this is pretty useful actually with winter coming. The old plough there is going to be getting some usage. Of course, it's an invaluable piece of kit out there in the, um, the wilds, I should imagine, clearing the paths and the roads so that the uh, service vehicles and the tourists can go and see the bears and the foxes and the badgers and stuff. So there we go. Look at that. Lovely details on here from Matchbox again, as usual. There's the old salt spreader at the back. Imagine putting the salt in there. So this is a full on uh, icy road clearer. What a piece. And, and finally, I think this is completes my, currently completes what I can get with these actual pieces. And the irony was on the day I picked this up, I wasn't actually gonna be buying anything. <laughs> I popped in Poundland, nothing in, on the shelves at all. It was a funny one in Wellingborough. And uh, I literally uh, had to break through, a, it was like an old um, 
crate and I noticed at the bottom of the crate were some cars and they were all covered up with some right old rubble. So I picked my way through the rubble and hoping to find a hack Hakasuka, but I found this instead. So I was super, super chuffed. Let's have a look at what we've found in Home Bargains. And yeah, Home Bargains are doing these three packs of um, Matchbox. And they've got a good range of uh, the three packs. They've got a police one, which I didn't pick up, which I probably might have to at some point. It's gonna bug me up when I'm sure. And there's a couple of other ones as well, uh, military packs. So yeah, they're all worth picking up. Uh, I'm not sure how to get into this one, so bear, bear with while I open it up. Dead. Right. Here we go, let's have a pull out. Now I got this because I really wanted that trailer at the bottom. You know with, you know what it's like when you buy a, a multi-pack of cars, um, you have to like at least one or two of the models in the pack in order to actually go with it. And I do know that I don't have one of these little things. <laughs> this is great, look. Woohoo! This is, what's it called? It's called the Skidster, that's right, yeah. And these things are awesome. They just sort of drive around you yeah i've seen people doing all sorts of them and this one does the stunts it's awesome look at that i love it the little skidster of course it's got the little scoop little bucket on the front lift that up and down Whee! okay let's have a look at this one this is the uh the beast tractor now, this is some sort of tractor pulling uh, competition tractor isn't it i mean look at this look at all these wheels on the bottom oh that's interesting now i thought that those wheels would be joined up with those ones but it actually turns out that these are actually fake wheels and they're part of the base well I never <laughs> I had all kinds of plans for these double wheels maybe you can make your own double wheels it's not it's not inconceivable is it to be fair but there we go it's quite effective though it looks really really good I love it actually um, it says matchbox on the side there does it let's have a look yeah matchbox on the wheels so what's it actually called? Oh, it's not called anything in particular, but it is a brand new model. Fantastic, look at that. Competition tractor. Trivial farm. Yeah, man, this is gonna pull some heavy stuff around. I mean, you could probably just use it as a normal tractor. Look at the size of that beast engine on the back there as well. It's a bit like a Porsche, isn't it? Maybe that's a spreader. It's got some sort of engine at the front as well. This, is, this thing is just basically an engine on some tr on some big wheels and it rolls nice as well that is a lovely model but this is what it was all about i know it's just a trailer and it comes from a farm but these old farm trailers they're great this is an interesting one as well farm trailer nice and simple plastic uh things on the top there i suppose that's uh to keep all the hay in and stuff uh looks like this piece here is also made of plastic yes a plastic tray and then it's got a metal chassis with a plastic insert a lot of matchbox cars now these days are really just one bit of metal so you don't know which bit of metal it's going to be but it turns out that this is actually the strongest bit of metal the actual trailer section hopefully hopefully now this will click onto this piece here and we can pull it around yeah there we go look at that oh yes we're going down the farm today. <laughs> and of course, gonna load your manure in the back with this little old thing here. Brilliant, what a set, fantastic. And that can all go and sit together. Oh, I love it. There we go, I've never really, had, never really had a skidster before. Actually liking that as a piece, but that's really, really cool. <laughs>
Okay, I'm going to kick off the Hot Wheels selection with a couple of old pieces that I've been finding. Um, I pick up stuff that I really like, obviously, from Hot Wheels, and I really like this, this Porsche. I liked it so much that I found two of them, different places, car boot sale and the market, 50p, 25p, I mean, really. But uh, obviously they're chipped up, very played with, but not in such bad condition that uh, I could afford to let them go. This one was more of a case of necessity, given the fact I had to pick up four for, four for a pound. As this one here was, I think it was like three for a pound or something like that, it was really like ridiculous. So, but here it is anyway, the old 928S Turbo in alternate colors. Um, I keep thinking these are color changes just because the paint is so, so thick. But uh, I don't know which is your favorite. I think I prefer the cream over the pink. Well, the pink is pretty, uh, pretty flamboyant. this up just to run with my port my um, Ford GT story and uh, here it is an interim piece future design but absolutely flat when it comes to performance so there we go the old GT 90 I don't think this is a model we're gonna see around too, too often these days from 1997 so there you go well before the Ford GT that we know and love now brilliant stuff not in bad nick either. So found at the car boot sale, and this was what it was all about. Four for twenty, four for a pound. This. <laughs> now originally I was just going to pick this up. I know, I know it's it's got a wheel missing. I know this happens a lot. But as you can see, it's probably restorable. It's got all its parts. The windows aren't in too bad shape actually. A little bit squished, but nothing really terrible. It's got an opening lid on there look at that bit of an engine in there needs a little bit of love probably but uh, i remember cozy Taguchi found a very similar piece to this it was in slightly better condition only slightly mind you and he managed to bring it back to life again and i know if you follow uh, bare metal he will tell you how to restore stuff and i'm hoping he will tell me to how to restore things or if i get the urge i may well send this off this one off as well so an old buddy of mine, Jimmy Mitchell, who I haven't seen around on the YouTube for a while. I'm missing you, Jimmy. I love what's in the box. He is back on Instagram now, thank goodness. So uh, good to see you back, bud. And there it is, the old 1969 Silver Shadow. Made in Hong Kong as well, look at that. And let's have a look at some of the uh, new Hot Wheels that have been gracing our shelves lately. You can see there's, we've got a mixture of short card, long card. That long card would be from um, Asda, I think. Yeah, Asda. Asda was uh, doing a bit of a special. They had, um, I think it was a pound a car, which was amazing. I couldn't believe it. There was loads of them and they, they were selling fast. So good old Asda there, letting us down with their matchbox, but boosting us back up again with some nice cheap Hot Wheels. And this is the old Mazda Repu uh, from Mad Mike, whoever Mad Mike is. Yeah, I think I know a Mad Mike, but uh, this is an American Mad Mike more than likely. There he is, his racing support truck, 1974 Mazda Repu. A really nice little model, actually. I've done a great job on this with the tampoing. And it's plastic base, metal body. Another another truck for us all to get into. And this one is the rotary engine beast. Right, what else have we found? Oh yes, the McLaren F1 GTR makes it back into the lineup again after so many years. Here it is. Um, not exactly sure how different to the original release this one is. But it's good to see it back nonetheless. Nice tempoed up, lots and lots of detail. Plastic base there, of course. But it does look fit for purpose. Very, very, very nice. I'm surprised they didn't do it. Oh, it is. It's a then and now, of course, that's why. 
There it is. So I should have mentioned the P1s out there somewhere waiting in the wings. Waiting to come out. Save that for another day, eh? Also, this is another new one. A new piece from Hot Wheels, the T2 pickup. Took me a while to find one of these. I haven't seen any more. Found this one in Hunt Stanton of all places. I was in the Tesco's up there. Just a cursory look at the shelves. They put a new box out that very morning. Um, and I was pretty much the only person to root through it. And I found this. So uh, very nice. I'm gonna open this one up. This is from the Art Car series. Ooh, have a look. Art car. It doesn't look particularly arty to me. It just looks um, looks a bit sporty actually. They've done a good job with this particular art car. It doesn't look so uh, flamboyant as the other ones, which is nice. We can just compare it actually to the old um, original Matchbox Lesney. It's not too not too off size really, is it? Look at that. Brilliant. I kind of like it. I like it if you like your cars low. This is the one to go. This one first. This is the RX7, um, 95 RX7. So uh, here it is, then and now. Nothing on the back. We're going to crack. This is the blue. Oh yeah. So we'll open it up. Have a look inside. Well, I saw this one first, and I thought, oh, that's nice. And then I saw its stable mate, and it got me thinking because it's. I mean, it's very, very, uh, very nice, isn't it? RX7. Here's its stable mate. And it's got a blue stripe on the side. When I saw the blue stripe first, I thought, well, oh, that's interesting. Is this one a uh, a Dodge? No, it's not. It's a completely different model. I believe this is a brand new model. And ironically, this is the now, and this is the then. This is what? This is uh, the, the then, the now from 1995, which is hardly now, is it really? <clears throat> so here's a, a Mazda from sort of like 19... 89 or something something like that so it's not even not even hardly a then is it really they're both a bit of a then and then but i do like this model i've got quite a few of these different variations on this one now um it's one that i haven't pursued in my uh urgency to collect every single version of it but it is a very nice piece and i know quite a few people a few out there do collect or try to collect every single version of this particular model because it is a beauty and there we go, it's the Mazda RX-7. Fantastic. So there's three Mazdas in the show today. Three lovely rotary models. I mean, basically, this is the soap bar version of this one, isn't it, really? The boxy uh, triangulation design. And then we swoop it up with a little bit of soap. It's really more of a then and then, isn't it? Let's face it. Fantastic stuff. These, these were going super cheap, all right, 50p or something crazy, yeah. Uh, Tesco's getting rid of all their old stock of this stuff. Oh yes, here goes something blue, the old Huayra. And it's the first time I've seen the Huayra in a while. Obviously I've seen it in this series, this Gran Turismo series for a while. Beautiful, wow. Love those blue tempos on there. Lovely, lovely shade. They've done a great job with the Huayra. As you can see, what a, what a splendid piece, the Pagani Hawaira. And I love the way they've actually done the roof there and they've filled it in and it's got, yeah, it's a great model. Nice one, Hot Wheels. Yeah, interesting uh, headlamp uh, situation. Hmm. <laughs> one has to wonder, I suppose that must be right. Of course, it's interesting, so it's got these two little holes here. I'm imagining that that's where you put those little leafy uh, mirrors if you look on the on the box there it's got them leafy little mirror stalks and it's probably where they hang out just out of these two little holes you have to wonder why you but they either put the holes in there or didn't actually put anything in the holes or are they hoping that we actually have some little leafy wing mirrors at home that we can place in there who knows but a lovely lovely piece nonetheless 
lots of little uh, tiny details and scripts and stuff like that written all over it. Brilliant thing. Love that. Didn't really look at the motorbike, did we? Love the motorbikes. I've got lots of motorbikes. There we go. Nothing on the back to speak of and very hard to see it in the box, but I'm going to keep this one in the box because I'm accumulating motorbikes for a show in the future. I've got quite a few now to show, so I'm still getting beautiful. Please. This was a bit more, this was an Asda special for a pound. I'll have that. What was it Asda? Actually, I think, actually, no, this was Poundland. There you go, Surf and Turf. Keeping that one in the box. It's got its uses, and not necessarily for me. But I kind of like it. I was looking for one. A, a special special situation and here's another one of those special situations there we go this one's probably gonna head off to Jersey I've got enough of these different sorts of ones of these now for my collection but I know somebody out there R2D2 who does like to collect lots and lots of all the different sorts of Ford Fiestas hopefully he hasn't got this one yet there you go. El Segundo Rally went to Poundlands uh, one day, as you do, popped in there, flying visit. Wasn't really looking for anything in particular, but I had to pick this one up, really. Um, it's quite nice, isn't it? The old Cruise Bruiser. But I had to pick this one up because, yeah, there you go. The Cruise Bruiser was flirting its superpowers. <laughs> and... Uh, I do know that quite a few of you out there have been finding these Cruise Bruiser Supers. So there we go. At last, something in the UK for a Super Find. Brilliant stuff. It's actually, uh, compared to the, the normal version, it's rather, rather special, isn't it? Yeah, I don't have any Cruise Bruisers in my collection, but it's just nice probably to have at least one, and this will be the one, wouldn't it? Thank goodness for that, as they say. But uh, again, it's not a particular casting that I am collecting. So uh, still, nice to have a super nonetheless. But a casting that I do collect is this piece here. Now, I think I picked this one up in Poundland. Absolutely splendid. The alternate color of the 17 Ford GT. And this is quite nice, this one, because it's got the stripes on it. Looking really, really splendid. Now, the same day that I picked up um, this old thing here, I wasn't actually going shopping for cars, I was just mooching. Uh, I popped into um, uh, Wilkinson's of all places and I was looking for my missus because she'd done a, the usual wandering off situation, going shopping. So uh, there I was walking around, I thought oh, I'll have a quick look at the Hot Wheels and flitting through the, flitting through the shed, <laughs> what was there, because they have all their cars out in a line, a bit of, you know, set up like that and then one in, t one in front of t'other in a shelf. And I came across a dark, very dark version of this. And I was thinking, oh, is, it, is that another color variation? Pulled it out, turned out to be this. And I was, well, you can imagine, I was in shock a little bit. Um, I tried to explain how I felt to my wife because she was the only person I could really explain it to. And uh, yeah, she was amazed, slightly. <laughs> Not as me though so there we go this is this is for me this is a proper uh, proper decent find in the UK as well this is uh, uh, Wilkinson's Hot Wheels I think everywhere sells Hot Wheels really they're just everywhere it's a bit boring really to be fair everywhere sells Hot Wheels really um, so yeah you, you're gonna find a super eventually and I'm really really pleased and stoked and super chuffed that I managed to find this one now this was the one I would say is the one that I would really really want and I've got it so there you go dreams do come true anyway 
there we go this is k5 saying thank you very much for watching hope you've enjoyed my hot wheel matchbox uh, finds um and see you in the next video where we're going to look at some different stuff that i also found that's after now